statesman and philosopher Francis Bacon was born in London on January 22, 1561. His father, Sir Nicholas Bacon, was Lord Keeper of the Seal. Francis Bacon began attending Trinity College, Cambridge, in April 1573. After studying law in the Honorable Society of Gray's Inn, in 1581 Francis Bacon landed a job as, as a member for Cornwall in the House of Commons. By 1582, he was appointed the position of Outer Barrister. Bacon's political career took a big leap forward in 1584 when he composed a letter of advice to Queen Elizabeth, his very first political memorandum. Bacon held his place in Parliament for nearly four decades, from, from 1584 to 1617, during which time he was extremely active in politics, law, and the royal court. When James I took over the throne of Britain, Francis Bacon was knighted. He continued to work his way swiftly up the legal and political ranks, achieving Solicitor General in 1607 and Attorney General six years later. In 1616, his career peaked when he was invited to join the Privy Council. Just a year later, he reached the same position of his father, Lord Keeper of the Great Seal. In 1618, Bacon surpassed his father's achievements when he was promoted to the lofty title of Lord Chancellor, one of the highest political offices in England. In 1621, Bacon became Viscount St. Albans and in the same year he was accused of accepting bribes and impeached by Parliament for corruption. Some sources claim that Bacon was set up by enemies in Parliament and the court faction and was used as a scapegoat to protect the Duke of Buckingham from public hostility. Bacon was tried and found guilty after he confessed. He was fined a hefty £40,000 and sentenced to the Tower of London, but fortunately his sentence was reduced and his fine was lifted. With his political career over, Bacon could now study philosophy, which was one of his passions. By the time he had reached adulthood, Bacon was determined to alter the face of natural philosophy. He strove to create a new outline for the sciences with a focus on empirical scientific methods, methods that depended on tangible proof while developing the basis of applied science. Unlike the doctrines of Aristotle and Plato, Bacon's approach placed an emphasis on experimentation and interaction. His new scientific method involved gathering data, prudently analyzing it, and performing experiments to observe nature's truth in an organized way. He believed that when approached this way, science could become a tool for the betterment of humankind. In 1620, when Bacon published Book I of Novum Organum Scientarium, Bacon established himself as a reputable philosopher of science. According to Bacon and Novum Organum, the scientific method should begin with the tables of investigation. It should then proceed to the table of presence, which is a list of circumstances under which the event being studied occurred. The table of absence in proximity is the next is then used to identify negative occurrences. Next, the table of comparison allows the observer to compare and contrast the severity or degree of the event. After completing these steps, a scientific observer is required to perform a short survey that will help identify the possible cause of the occurrence. Unlike a typical hypothesis, however, Bacon did not emphasize the importance of testing one's theory. Instead, he believed that observation and analysis were sufficient in producing a greater comprehension or ladder of axioms that creative minds could use to reach still further understanding. All of his writings shared one thing in common. It expressed Bacon's desire to change and antiquated systems. In March 1626, Bacon was performing a series of experiments with ice. While testing the effects of cold on the preservation and decay of meat, he stuffed a hen with snow near Highgate, England, and caught a chill and died. In the years after Bacon's death, his theories began to have a major influence on the evolving field of 17th century European science. Scientific institutions followed this model. I said goodbye with words, I know a hundred times. I go back to her, and you go back. Oh, back to...